Thank you for introduction, and uh, I'd like to thank organizers for giving me a chance to talk here. Uh, it's a, a great honor for me. <coughs> uh, in my talk, I will explain a result on some property of the local Langlands correspondence, and uh, it is called the depth preservation of the local Langlands correspondence. So please let me start from uh, recording uh, the local Langlands correspondence and uh, what the depth preserving is. Uh, today, we will focus on uh, periodic groups. So let F be a periodic field. Namely, this is a finite extension of QP. And uh, we consider a connected reductive group over F. Then, uh, as explained in the last week, we can consider the local Langlands correspondence for this group G. <clears throat> uh, this conjectural correspondence uh, gives a natural map from the set of irreducible smooth representations of G, uh, I write L G for it, uh, to, to the set of L parameters, I write phi G. <coughs> uh, mo modulo G hat conjugacy. <coughs> and uh, pr please recall that uh, every fiber of this map is finite and uh, called L packet. So this map is with finite fibers. <clears throat> this is a very rough statement for LLC for G. And uh, uh, of course, this is a still a conjecture for general G, but thanks to recent developments, for several groups, this is already a theorem. In particular, uh, when G is GLN, this correspondence was established by Harris and Taylor. And uh, also when G is <coughs> quasi-split classical group, It was established by Arthur and Mock. Here, uh, this word classical means, uh, especially SP and the symplectic group and the special orthogonal group and the unitary group. And uh, today, uh, we want to consider the uh, following question for these groups. The question is how natural is LLC? Uh, yeah, but, but here uh, I, I put the word quasi split. So, yeah. <clears throat> Ah, so you, you mean for temper, tempered? Oh, okay. So. <clears throat> Thank you. So today's uh, question is uh, this one. And uh, uh, here, of course, the naturality of the map of LLC uh, can be formulated strictly in a mathematical sense. Uh, for example, in the case of GLN, I think it was explained by Professor Lei Zhang in the last week. And in this case, uh, the correspondence can be characterized by the theory of epsilon factor and L factor. And in the case of uh, classical groups, as explained in Professor Witek Gang, uh, this can be characterized by the theory of endoscopy. So, but uh, it is known that uh, the map of LLC satisfies a lot of good properties other than such characterizations. 
And also, there are so many conjectures about such good properties. So here, uh, so naturality here means uh, the naturality beyond such characterizations. Okay, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Ah, yes, I I exactly, yeah. So, so in the case of even orthogonal groups, it, it is modular, modular outer automorphism. Ah, yes, yes, yes. There is a work of Atobe and Okan. Thank you. <coughs> so this naturality means uh, beyond the characterization. And the depth preserving property is one of such uh, expectations for LLC. And uh, next, I want to explain it. <coughs> uh, to understand the depth preservation of LLC, I think it's good to uh, go back to the case of GL1. So here, let's go back to the case of GL1. When G is equal to GL1, uh, the local Langlands correspondence is, is just a, a smooth dialog of the local class field theory. So in this case, LLC is equivalent to the local class field theory. And this gives an um, isomorphism between the unit group of F. So this is GL1F. And uh, the abelian value group of F. <coughs> but here, the important point is uh, this map preserves much deeper information. So namely, uh, the higher unit group of F cross can be identified with the ramification filtration of value group. So here, uh, IF is the inertia subgroup of WF and uh, this is uh, the ramification filtration of inertia. <coughs> and uh, actually, this is a depth preservation for LLC for GL1. And uh, in this case, the depth is just a natural number uh, at here. So today we want to consider the generalization of this property for LLC for classical groups. <coughs> uh, today we want to generalize this. And uh, to do it, we first have to consider a generalization of uh, this depth for uh, each side of LLC. For so namely, we have to consider its generalization to irreducible smooth, rep smooth representations and L parameters. So let's first consider the depth of uh, representations. Let pi be an irreducible smooth representation of G. Then we can define its depth as follows. Uh, let's write d pi. The depth of pi is defined to be the infimum of non-negative real numbers satisfying uh, the following condition. The space of fi uh, gxr plus fixed vectors is not zero for some point x of bg. <coughs> So let, let me explain these notations. Uh, first, BG is the Brillatitz building. Uh, 
that it's building of G. <coughs> uh, in this talk, I don't explain the definition of the building of G. But anyway, uh, this is a set. And uh, if we take a point of this set, we can get an um, open compact a subgroup of GF. Uh, so here, uh, may maybe today I will often use the same symbol G uh, for the set of f valid points of G. And uh, if, if we take a point of PG, then we can get an open compact subgroup, a uh, so-called parabolic subgroup attached to the point X. And uh, moreover, uh, this parabolic subgroup has a filtration indexed by non-negative real numbers. And it is called the moi plus low filtration of parabolic subgroups. So for every R, uh, we can define uh, its filtration GXR plus. And here, R, R plus means R plus sufficiently small positive number epsilon. <clears throat> so because uh, this filtration for parabolic subgroups uh, discrete, uh, so decreases discreetly, so we can say GXR plus is the next step to GXR. <coughs> okay, th this is a definition of depth for representation. And the next, we generalize the notion of depth for L parameters. Okay, the definition of the depth for L parameters is the following. This is, a, also this is an infimum of non-negative real numbers uh, such that the restriction of phi to IFR plus is trivial. Uh, here, uh, please recall that uh, L parameter is a homomorphism from Bayu group times SL2C Bayu Dreen group to the L group of G, which is a semi-direct product of dual of G and uh, the Bayu group. So here, uh, trivial means for every sigma in IFR plus, phi maps uh, sigma one to one right times sigma. This is the meaning of trivial. <coughs> okay, uh, then we can formulate our problem. First, we suppose that we have an L packet and its corresponding L parameter. So here, pi, pi phi g is the L packet corresponding to phi. And the question is to, compare the depth of phi to the depth of pi. Here, pi is a member of our L packet. Here, please note that a priori, the depth of representations may not be constant in each L packet. So of course, uh, it is possible to expect it, uh, but we don't know it a priori. So this problem uh, contains such a problem of constancy of depth in each L packet. <coughs> and for this problem, uh, there are two important preceding results. So let, let me in, introduce them. First one is a result of Zhu Kan Yu. He proved that when G is a general linear group GLN, the depth is always preserved by LLC. <coughs> 
And the next result is uh, due to gonopathy in the Burma. They considered a uh, quasi split SP or SO. And they proved for these groups under the assumption that the residual, residual characteristic P is large enough, the depth of representation can be bounded by its corresponding L parameter. So they gave a partial answer to that depth preserving problem. And uh, uh, today's my result is a slight enhancement of their result. <laughs> okay, I explain my main result. Uh, in this result, we consider quasi split classical groups. And uh, assume the residual characteristic P is greater than uh, two times size of G. Here, uh, the size of G means the size as matrices. So, so for for example, in the case of case of uh, SO two n plus one. So then, uh, this condition is that P is greater than two times two n plus one. Uh, actually, this is the same condition as that of Ganapasi and Burma. And uh, in fact, in their paper, uh, this condition was not explicated, so I computed it explicitly. Uh, but uh, th this is an assumption for my result. And the consequence is the following. <coughs> then, the max of depth in our L packet is equal to the depth of corresponding L parameter. In other words, at least one member of L packet attains the equality of Ganapasi and Burma. <coughs> and moreover, when G is a unitary group, we can show the constancy of depth in L packet. So in this case, we can show that d pi is equal to d phi for every member of L packet. <coughs> so the depth preservation of LLC for uh, unitary groups is completely true under this assumption. <coughs> and in the rest of uh, my talk, I want to explain the outline of the proof of this result. Uh, but uh, before it, I want to reformulate uh, our problem and uh, this result by using the theory of endoscopy. <coughs> uh, namely, uh, by using the theory of endoscopy, uh, we can reduce uh, this to a problem of endoscopic lifting. So we consider a reformulation by a <coughs> endoscopy. <coughs> Here, please recall again that an um, L parameter is a homomorphism from a Bayou Dream group to G hat right times Bayou group. And uh, in our pro, uh, in the setting of our problem, we are considering such an L parameter and the corresponding L packet. <coughs> and the key observation here is uh, that uh, because G is a classical group, uh, we have a nat natural representation of G hat into some GLN. So by considering a standard representation, we can regard uh, this L group of G as a subgroup of 
the L group for some GLN. Uh, for, for example, in the case of SO2N plus 1, uh, then G hat is given by SP2N, 2NC. So in this case, uh, the size of GLN is given by 2, 2N. <coughs> So in particular, by composing this embedding to our original L parameter, we can get an L parameter for GLN. And moreover, by considering LLC for GLN, we can get a representation of GLN. And this representation is called the endoscopic lift of this L packet. Okay, and uh, there are uh, two very important observations uh, in this picture. The first one is, by the definition of depth for L parameters, uh, this operation uh, co composing the L embedding doesn't change the depth of L parameters. And uh, the second observation is, by a result of U, uh, the depth preservation for GLN, uh, this uh, depth of this endoscopic lift is equal to the depth of phi. So, so our original purpose uh, is to compare the depth of this L packet to the depth of this L parameter, but now it's reduced to comparing the depth of this L packet and depth of its endoscopic lift. So, Now our problem is, uh, thanks to the theorem of U, reduced to <coughs> a comparison of d pi to its endoscopic lift. So then, uh, let's consider how to compare them. Uh, so I think, so as explained it, uh, as explained in the talk of uh, Professor Witek Gan, uh, this operation uh, endoscopic lift can be characterized by so-called the endoscopic character identity. So we investigate the character identity. <coughs> so the endoscopic lift. <coughs> is characterized by the endoscopic character identity. So uh, next, uh, let's recall it. But here, uh, for the character identity, we have to assume that our L parameter is tempered. Actually, so th this is a harmless assumption for our problem because, uh, because the LLC is compatible with taking Langlands quotient and also the uh, invariant depth is preserved by uh, taking Langlands quotient and probability induction. So this is a harmless assumption. And anyway, so for under this assumption, the character identity is given by the following. First, we consider a test function on GLN and its transfer transfer to G. I think the notion of transfer was uh, very explained in Tony's talk, and uh, it's, uh, it's characterized by the notion of matching orbital integrals. But anyway, so for such pair of functions, the one side of character identity is 
given by the twisted character of the endoscopic lift. So he here, tilde means a twist at F. And the other side is the sum over our L packet of the character at the transferred function. <coughs> this is a character identity. And uh, I think here I should note that in this endoscopic side, uh, this is given by just a sum without any sign because we are considering a tempered L packet. So I think this is a specialty of L packet among a packet. And uh, the important point is uh, this, uh, the operation of endoscopic lift can be characterized by this equality because every representation can be determined uniquely by its character. So the slogan here is characters tell all. <clears throat> so our basic strategy is uh, first, uh, to rephrase the notion of depth as a property of character, and second, uh, compare them by using this equality. It's a basic strategy. <clears throat> okay, now I want to explain the outline of proof. The proof consists of two parts. <clears throat> in the first part, we will show the converse inequality of Ganapasi Burma's result. So, so in the first part, we show that the max of depth of representations in our L packet uh, can be bounded below by the depth of its endoscopic lift. And uh, so by combining it with the result of Ganapati and Burma, uh, of course we can make this inequality to be the equality. And in the second part, we consider the case of unitary group. <coughs> for, for unitary groups, uh, in the second part we will show the depth, a minimum of the depth in our L packet can be, uh, also this can be bounded below by the depth of endoscopic lift. Uh, if we can show this, uh, because we, we know the equality of, of these invariants in the step one, so, so then the max of depth uh, can be bounded above by the minimum of depth, so the constancy immediately falls from this equality. <coughs> Okay, so uh, let's first consider uh, the proof of first step. The idea of the first step is to transfer the radius of character expansions Okay, so let me explain what the character expansion is. <clears throat> so, uh, in general, it's very difficult to compute uh, the characters of representations. Uh, however, uh, if we focus on some small neighborhood of the origin of our periodic group, then the behavior of character can be well described. Uh, it is a character expansion established by Harish Chandra and Debakka. And uh, to be more precise, uh, for, for non-negative real number R, we define uh, uh, GR plus to be G, GR plus to be the union of every R plus filtration of paraphoric subgroups. 
then the uh, rough statement of the character expansion is as follows. <coughs> We consider the restriction of distribution character to the set of functions supported on G uh, depth pi plus. Then uh, this can be written as a C linear combination. Of Fourier transforms of uh, nilpotent orbital integrals. On the the Lie algebra of G, <coughs> I think uh, Harish Chandra showed that. We have such an expansion on sufficiently small neighborhood of the origin, and uh, then uh, Debacker determined the size of Debacker related the size of such small neighborhood to the depth of the representation, and uh, so this is a result of Chandra and. Debacker. <coughs> And uh, as another very important nature, actually we have the converse of this statement. The converse means uh, if this distribution character has such an expansion on CC infinity GR plus for some R, if this has a, such an expansion, Then we can show that the depth of pi is not greater than r. So in other words, uh, the depth of representation is optimal, uh, gives the optimal radius for this character expansion. And uh, this, I think this is a result of Ganapati and Burma. And uh, this property played a very important role in their proof of the inequality. Uh, so, I, you mean uh, this property? Uh, so, uh, actually, I, I don't know because so in in the proof of Debaka, uh so the, he, he used the assumption on residual characteristic very crucially uh, because uh, he used the jacobson morozov theorem for uh, Lie algebras over finite fields. And uh, I think jacobson morozov theorem has a counter example for small residual characteristic. But I don't know uh, whether the jacobson morozov theorem for such finite Lie algebras uh, is needed for <laughs> the proof of this theorem. So. I, I don't know actually. And uh, our aim is to combine this theory with the character identity. So I think it's very natural to ask uh, whether a twisted version of this theory exists or not. And uh, actually, uh, a twisted version of this theory exists. Uh, precisely, we can expand the twisted character on CC infinity G depth pi pi plus. <clears throat> this is a result of Adra and Coleman. And uh, also, we can show the optimality of uh, d pi phi plus as a radius of this character expansion. We can show the optimality 
of d pi phi plus. We can show this by uh, just imitating uh, the argument of Ganapati and Burma. So we can show this by twisting Ganapati Burma's argument. <coughs> so by putting all of these together, we can complete the first step as follows. So first, uh, let R be the maximum of depth of representations in our L packet. Then, uh, by the theorem of Harishandra and Debacker, uh, we have an expansion of this, this distribution character. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, we can expand the sum of distribution characters. On, uh, CC infinity, GR plus. So uh, here, in order to combine it with the character identity, we have to consider an expansion of the sum. So, uh, to expand the sum, we have to uh, choose the smallest neighborhood of the uh, origin. So, so it is why the maximum of depth appears here. And uh, an another point is that, actually we can prove that uh, every test function supported on G GLN, GLNR plus is transferred to a test function supported on uh, this set. So by noting it, we can say that the twisted character of the endoscopic rect uh, also has an expansion on CC infinity <coughs> GLN R plus. Then uh, by using the uh, optimality of the radius, we can conclude that the depth of pi phi is bounded, bounded above by R. And this completes the proof of the first step. <clears throat> and the Next, I want to explain the outline of the proof of the second step. And the idea of this step is to establish a variant of the fundamental lemma for positive depth direction. So this variant of the fundamental lemma uh, means the following, uh, following the statement. The statement is for every, for every point of the building of G and uh, every depth R, ah, I'm sorry. there exists a point of the building of GLN such that the characteristic function of g x r plus is a transfer of the characteristic function of g l n y r plus. So let's consider uh, what happens if we admit this statement. So if we can show this, uh, then uh, we consider 
the character identity for these test functions. So by using the endoscopic character identity, we get the following equality. The twisted character of phi phi at <coughs> the characteristic function of GL and Y R plus is equal to the sum of the characters at uh, <coughs> this function. And uh, here the key point is uh, we can compute uh, this character very explicitly. In fact, uh, this is equal to the dimension of GXR plus fixed vectors uh, in pi. Um, maybe we have to multiply the volume of GXR plus, but basically uh, this is written by this dimension. We, we can check this equality easily because this test function acts on pi as a projector to this space. So by considering the definition of distribution characters, we can show this easily. So but by noting this, uh, we can prove the second step. Uh, let, uh, let's take R to be the minimum of depth of representations in our packet. <coughs> then, uh, by the definition of depth and uh, this observation, we can immediately say that the right-hand side of that equality is not zero for some point x. Then, of course, left-hand side is not zero for some point y corresponding to x in uh, that statement. Then, uh, by a similar argument to, to showing this equality, uh, we can show that uh, the non-vanishing of the twisted character implies that the non-vanishing of this uh, space of fixed vectors. <coughs> then again, by the definition of depth, we can show the depth of pi phi can be bounded by R. So if we can show this statement, then uh, we can get that equality by very formal argument. So the most essential part of our proof is this statement. So finally, I want to comment on the proof of this step. So let's write star for this statement. <coughs> and to get that statement, we compute the semi-simple descent of test functions. So uh, what is a semi-simple descent? Uh, please recall that uh, our classical group G is a uh, twisted endoscopic group. For the pair of GLN and theta. I think the meaning of, meaning of theta is explained in a Wittek's talk. And uh, this is some involution on GLN. So, so this is a twist of uh, the theory of endoscopy. And uh, uh, particularly, so in our situation, this is given by expli explicitly by the composition of transpose inverse and some conjugation by uh, anti-diagonal matrix. But 
Anyway, uh, G is a twisted endoscopy for these pairs. And uh, please recall that the transfer of test functions gives a uh, correspondence between the test functions on GLN and uh, those of G. And uh, actually, and uh, pr please also recall that this is characterized by the notion of matching orbital integrals. And in fact, uh, in a similar way to defining the transfer for twisted endoscopy, we can consider a correspondence between GLN and GLN theta. So here, GLN theta means uh, the fixed points of GLN under the involution theta. And this is called the semi-simple descent. <clears throat> and the key point here is, in contrast to the a transfer for twisted endoscopy, uh, it is not so difficult to compute the semi-simple descent uh, for test functions. So by a very elementary group theoretical argument, we can compute a semi-simple descent of test functions. And in particular, uh, for the characteristic functions of uh, positive depth open compact subgroups, we can describe their descent very explicitly. <coughs> so by using uh, such a computation for some simple descent, our problem of a variant of the fundamental lemma can be reduced to a comparison of test functions on G and GL and theta. And here, the speciality of the unitary groups plays a big role. <coughs> Actually, when G is a unitary group, GL and theta is equal to G itself. And moreover, in this case, semi-simple descent is nothing but transfer. So uh, just by doing a group theoretic computation of twisted groups, uh, we can get a transfer for characteristic functions of positive depth uh, open compact subgroups. And this completes the proof of the second step. So here I should uh, uh, emphasize that uh, we use the great speciality of unitary groups. So for, for example, in the case of G, the case where G is equal to SL2 and plus one, uh, in this case, uh, G hat is given by SP2N. So uh, large N is given by 2N. And uh, in this case, uh, GLN theta is equal to SP2N. So this is different from uh, endoscopic group G. Uh, but uh, still in, uh, also in this situation, we can compute the semi-simple descent for characteristic functions uh, from GLN to SP2N. But it uh, doesn't uh, imply the transfer for characteristic functions so immediately. And uh, I think, so, in, in this situation, the operation uh, corresponding, uh, operation relating these test functions to these test functions is called the non-standard endoscopic transfer. So in, in this case, the, the relation between these two sets is called the non-standard endoscopic transfer. And I, I think the difficulty of describing the non-standard endoscopic transfer is not so different from that for transfer. So in, a, in the case of other classical groups, the essential difficulty still remains. <coughs> but anyway, for unitary groups, we can prove in this way. Ah, so uh, the case where G is SO2N, I think we usually take 
uh, theta to be the composition of transpose inverse and uh, a conjugation by uh, anti-diagonal matrices of one minus one, one minus one. So I, I think in this case, uh, GLM theta is given by SP2N. So in this case, uh, this is not uh, non-standard endoscopy and uh, uh, just a standard endoscopy, but I think it's still difficult to <laughs> describe the transfer. <coughs> okay. And uh, finally, I want to comment on the non quasi split uh, cases. Actually, uh, we can uh, show the same result for non quasi split classical groups. I want to comment on it. So let's consider the case where G is a non, non quasi split. Unitary group. And in this case, the local Langlands correspondence was established by Kaleza, Ringet, Shin, and White. So we can consider the same problem for this group. And actually, uh, we can reduce the problem for non quasi split cases. Uh, to the quasi split cases by using the local theta correspondence. So, more precisely, let's consider the following group. So, G star, this is a quasi split unitary group of uh, such that such that the size of G star is given by the size of G plus one and uh, uh, attached to the same quadratic extension as for G. Then uh, the local theta correspondence gives a, uh, uh, gives a correspondence between representations for G and G star. So basically, theta lift gives a correspondence between these two sets. And the important point here is this theta lift has the following two properties. The first one is that the theta lift preserves the depth of representations. This is a result of PAN. And the second, the theta lift of representations can be described by using LLC. I think uh, this is a result of Gan and Ichino uh, for this special case, and uh, maybe uh, Atobe Gan for more general case. So this is a result of Gan Ichino or Atobe Gan. So by combining these properties, uh, we can show the depth preservation from non quasi split cases in the following way. So let's consider an um, irreducible smooth representation of G and uh, take corresponding its corresponding L parameter. And uh, let's consider the theta lift of this representation. And moreover, uh, taking uh, its corresponding L parameter and uh, write theta pi for it. Uh, 
then the depth of phi <coughs> is equal to the depth of its theta lift. This is a result of a pan. And uh, the depth of this representation is equal to the depth of theta pi. This is our, uh, by our result of quasi split cases. And finally, uh, by using a description of theta lift by LLC, we can show that the depth of theta pi is equal to the depth of phi. So more precisely, I think in this case, uh, the L parameter of this theta lift can be written as a, some twist, uh, quadratic twist of this L parameter and uh, quadratic character. So in particular, we can say that the depth of this parameter is equal to that of phi. And uh, this completes the proof. <coughs> Ah, okay, uh, that's all. Uh, I stop here. Thank you very much. Yes? If you computed the dimensional of the ZX compound, you understand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I uh, yes, e exactly. But I haven't computed it yet. So what do you expect is the dimension? Of I'm sorry. What do you expect is the dimension? Ah, uh, I have no idea because <laughs> I I haven't considered it. <laughs> Ah, yes, yes. Uh, so uh, it is used in the debugger's result. And uh, yes. Uh, so. Uh, do you know uh, yeah, I, I explicated and. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and uh, in the computation of semi simple descent, uh, that assumption is not needed. I think uh, just uh, the oddness of P is enough for that computation. Yes. 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 Uh, I think the semi-simple descent gives a, a equality of a usual orbital integrals. So I, I think it's finer than stable orbital integrals. But, but I think... Uh, um, maybe another point is uh, we focus on the test functions on uh, supported on po positive depths Part. Yeah, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you get to test the comparison to put the comparison Yes. The comparison are on two different groups, so no? two identity groups, like the elementary one? I, I, I'm sorry. So, so, how do you get the comparison of depth? Mm -hmm. From the character comparison, yes. So the depth of representation can be understood understood as a size of radius of character expansions. So. Ah, yes, yes. Yes. Yeah, 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 yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, so. Uh, 
Yes, so, uh, in fact, uh, in the paper of uh, Lida and you, uh, th there is a counter example for depth preservation. I, I think it is, uh, uh, the group of their counter example is SUPQP, and they constructed a counter example by using a simple superclustering representation. So I, I think this problem is, uh, depends on P, but also heavily depends on the type of groups. So, yes. <laughs>